Welcome back to new session. This is your trainer and PMP coach Anand. My goal is to help you pass the PMP exam and be a part of your exciting PMP certification journey. This is continuation of cost management knowledge area. In this session, you will learn estimate cost process. Before you start, request you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Learning objective of this session are we will start with the process overview, followed by definition of estimate cost process. We'll talk about input tool techniques and output. We'll go through various estimation techniques, discuss contingency and management reserve. We'll talk about cost of quality and basis of estimation. And finally, a quick review. We have four processes in this project cost management knowledge area. First three processes are under planning process group, that is plan cost management, estimate cost, and determine budget. And the last process control cost is in monitoring and controlling process group. Of course, the focus of this session is to learn estimate cost process. Scope is key for estimating cost. Scope is translated into action in the form of activities. This is done in define activities and sequence activities process in schedule management plan. This is the starting point for the estimate cost process, whose main purpose is to take those activities from activities list and estimate their individual cost. Estimate activity resources linked to cost estimation as type and quantity of resources is a key input. Estimation can be done at activity level or at work package level. Project manager has to consider all types of cost. Resources cost, which includes human resource, equipment, hardware, software. Variable cost are fixed cost, direct and indirect cost, as well as he has to consider time sensitive cost or seasonal cost. Information is gathered from various processes. For example, resource availability details from resource management knowledge area, time of resource procurement from schedule management knowledge area. Project financing details will be taken from cost management plan. You also need to understand this is estimation process. Now estimation is as good as the information available at the time of estimation. So cost estimates are predictions that is based on the information available at that time. Cost trade-offs and the risk should be considered. So generally, if you are doing a make or buy decision, you need to think about cost against the risk that you are taking. Estimation should be reviewed and refined during the course of project to reflect additional details as it becomes available. Assumption should be continuously tested and accordingly, it should be either added or removed. Let's look at the process definition. Based on the input from schedule and resource management processes, it is the process of developing an approximation of the monetary resources needed to complete all project activities. It determines the amount of cost required to complete the project work. We have various inputs, tools and techniques and outputs. There are a lot of tools and techniques used for estimation. Most of them we we'll already learn in schedule management to estimate the duration of an activity. And the key output is cost estimates. So inputs are project management plan, project documents, enterprise environmental factors, and organizational process assets. Project management plan. The key input is cost management plan. It defines how project cost will be estimated. It provides specific guidelines that affect this process. For example, guidelines about unit of measure, level of precision, level of accuracy. It specifies preferred methods or technique to be used in estimation. Next is quality management plan. It provides information on the cost of quality. It is used to evaluate the cost impact of quality related activities on the project. As a project manager, you need to ensure that all the cost related to every quality related activity is included inside the estimation. Scope baseline, 
It contains project scope statement, work breakdown structure, and WBS dictionary, which contains information about the work packages. WBS dictionary will be updated with the cost estimate of the work package during the course of this process. Project schedule. The duration estimate of each work package or activity combined with the information on the resources will be used to create the cost estimate. Cost is always time bound, hence it is important to know when these activities are scheduled. Resource requirement. This identifies the type and quantities of resources required for each work package or activity. This combined with the duration information contained in the project schedule will be used to create the cost estimate during this process. Risk register. It contains information that can be used to estimate cost, especially when obtaining three-point estimates that includes optimistic pessimistic assumption. And finally, lesson learned register, which is a part of integration knowledge area. So lesson learned register will have information about past cost estimation exercises on the project and the lessons learned from that. So it will be helpful to improve accuracy and precision of the cost estimate during this process. Enterprise environmental factor also will have impact on cost estimation. Some of the internal EF are internal resource rate, HR policies, specially hiring policy, releasing policy, overtime policy. So all these may impact the estimation. Organizational culture as well as organizational structure. Some of the external enterprise environmental factor that may have impact are published commercial information for any particular application area. There may be databases that contain standard human resource costs and standard cost for material and equipment. So that may help, yeah, that may impact the project. Market conditions, this will determine the standard cost for the resources that may be used on the project. And finally, exchange rate. OPA, so there are various OPA which may uh, influence the cost estimation activity. So cost estimating policies and template, this should be included in the cost management plan. So existing cost policies and procedures as well as guidelines may impact uh, the estimation activity. Financial control procedures, financial databases, uh, basically old project finance detail, your old uh, uh, finance depositories, historical information, especially from similar project, um, and finally a lesson learned, which will have a past cost escalation related issue and how they are resolved. So that also may help you to do a better estimation. So far, we have talked about inputs for this process to estimate the cost. So what are the tools and techniques that we will apply? So let's go through the list. We have expert judgment, analogous estimating technique, parametric estimating, bottom-up estimating, three-point estimation, data analysis technique, project management information system, and finally, decision making. Some of these estimation techniques are used in different processes. In schedule management, you have estimate activity duration process where you can find these tools and techniques. In resource management, you have estimate activity resource process. Again, we will use some of these te uh, techniques. And in cost management, you have estimate cost process. In estimate activity durations process, we use analogous estimating, parametric estimating, and three-point estimating for duration estimations and bottom-up estimating for aggregation of duration as per WBS. In estimate activity resource process, we use analogous estimating, parametric estimating to estimate the number of resources required to complete the task and bottom-up estimating for aggregation of number of resources as per work breakdown structure. And please note that we don't use a three-point estimation um, during the resource estimation. Let's start with analogous estimation. Think of a work to paint the door. The resource has completed similar activity in the past. Right now, you are asking that resource to estimate the cost to paint another similar door with a different color. He will think for a moment and based on his past experience of performing similar tasks and expert judgment, he will estimate the cost. 
So through analogous estimation, you can estimate the cost of activity using historical data from a similar activity or a project. Key points you need to remember to answer analogous estimation related question. It uses think analogy, something similar. It is applicable to values mostly, for example, cost, budget, or measurements like size, weight, and complexity. Estimation heavily relies on the actual cost of a previous similar activities or similar project. It is used when there is a limited amount of information available, uses historical information through an expert judgment, and remember everything is less, less costly, less time consuming, but less accurate. It can be applied to a total project or to a segment of a project or an activity. Take another example. As a project manager, you have completed a project to install 20 computers in a school computer lab. You have a new requirement to set up computer lab in another school and they are expecting a quick estimate. Which technique you will use? Of course, analogous estimation. When do we use this technique? We use this when we have a similar project requirement, limited information is available, and you have experience estimator. In this scenario, information available is number of computer to be installed in a school lab, that is a 40, installation duration of each computer, which is 30 minutes, and every computer has a standard configuration. This is also called as a gross value estimation, means sometimes this estimate can go horribly wrong as we don't have a precise or detailed requirements. Parametric estimation. It is also known as top-down estimating technique. In this technique, sophisticated algorithms are used to calculate duration based on historical data and multiple project parameters. Algorithm uses a statistical relationship between historical data and other parameters. Think about a large construction project like road project, railways construction project. You might be wondering how estimations are done for such a large scale project. So the answer is there are software tools which uses algorithms to do this estimation. One of the well-known construction cost and duration estimation tool is a Candy software. So what are these parameters? Let's understand through an example. If a resource is capable of installing 100 meter of a train track per hour, installation of 1000 meter or one kilometer track will take 10 hours. So this is just one parameter. However, in real life, we will need to feed in many such parameters to those tools to get an accurate estimation. So the accuracy of estimation depends on accuracy of historical data, sophistication and scalability of a model, a tool. Don't expect to get same result by buying a $100 tool compared to $100,000 tool. And of course, what kind of quantifiable parameters you have so that you can feed in those information. The advantage of this technique is estimations are quick. However, they are not as accurate as bottom-up estimation technique. We will talk about bottom-up estimation in upcoming uh, slides. Most industries has their own cost estimation model. For example, in IT industry, you have a different parametric cost estimation model. Function point model, so it is a unit of measurement to express the amount of business functionality can be delivered, yeah, can be provided by a software to a user. So there will be unit cost of each function point. So function point represents some sort of a business functionality and it will be multiplied with the number of function point to calculate the total cost of that software. You also have a COCOMO model, which stands for constructive cost model. It is a model that allow one to estimate the cost, efforts, efforts and schedule when planning a new software development activity. Then you have SLOC, source line of a code model. It is a software metric used to measure the size of computer program by counting number of lines in the program source code. So mostly this is of course a, a software development related model. 
Next tool and technique is three point estimation. It is a technique used to estimate cost by applying average of optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely estimates. It is used when there is uncertainty with the individual activity estimates. So we have optimistic O based on the analysis of best case scenario, most likely M based on realistic effort assessment for required work. Sometimes it is also referred as ML most likely. And we have pessimistic P which is based on analysis of worst case scenario. This is also called as a PERT technique, Program Evaluation and Review Technique. We have two formulas, triangular distribution or average formula, which is equal to optimistic plus most likely plus pessimistic divided by three. And then we have beta distribution, yeah, weighted average formula, where we have optimistic O plus 4M plus P divided by six. Let's take some example. You have three different activities, activity one, activity two, and activity three with their optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic estimates. Let's apply first formula that is triangular distribution or optimistic plus most likely plus pessimistic divided by three, and you get uh, different uh, values for each activity. So activity one, so result is 2033, activity 2 result is 2800, and activity 3 result is 3000. Let's apply another beta distribution average formula and you get another three results. Now let's try to analyze this result. For activity 1, there is a very less variance between most likely estimate which is 2000 and the result you got after applying both formulas, that is 2033 and 2017. So very, very less variance. For activity two, variance in optimistic, most likely and pessimistic values are increased, which results in high variance between most likely and average, which is 400 but moderate variance between most likely and beta distribution estimate, which is 300. For activity three, variance in optimistic, most likely and pessimistic values are further increased, which results in further high variance between most likely and average, which is 1200. However, still moderate variance between most likely and beta distribution estimate, which is 600. So this shows beta distribution formula will get you a better estimates. Bottom up estimate. In this technique, you estimate project cost by aggregating the estimate of the lower level component of the work breakdown structure. First, you sum up the cost of each activity for each work package. Then you sum up the subtotals for each work package. And further, you roll up the levels of WBS until you get cost estimate for the entire project. The advantage are it is highly accurate and the disadvantage is it is time consuming. It is exactly opposite to top down estimating technique that is analogous estimation and parametric estimation. The next tool and technique is data analysis, which includes reserve analysis, cost of quality, and alternative analysis. Let's, let's look into each of them. Reserve analysis refer to analyzing contingency and management reserves to deal with risk. Let's understand this through a practical example. You are project director in ABC Corporation and your project department get a budget of 100 million to execute various projects. You initiate three projects, project A with a baseline of 35 million, project B with a baseline of 35 million, and project C with a baseline of 25 million. Project A and B has an estimated cost of 34 million each and a contingency of 1 million each. For project C, estimated cost of 24 million and contingency of 1 million. So you initiated a project worth 95 million and contingency budget to deal with known risks are included in it. Why another project worth 5 million is not initiated? 
because you need some reserve money to deal with unknown risk unknown risk like a natural disaster so when such unknown risk surfaces management uses this fund to deal with it and that fund is called as management reserve so in this case 5 million is considered as a management reserve so what is contingency reserve it is a budget within cost baseline that is allocated for identified and accepted risk known unknowns allocation can be for a specific activity project or both allocation can be percentage of estimated cost or a fixed number contingency should be clearly documented and it can be reduced or eliminated throughout the life cycle of a project it is a part of a cost baseline and overall funding requirements what is management reserve it is project budget withheld for management control purposes it is reserved for unforeseen work that is within the scope of project generally referred as unknown unknown it is not included in the cost baseline but it is also a part of overall project budget and funding requirement when management reserves are used it is added to a cost baseline thus requiring an approved change to a cost baseline so basically project manager doesn't have a direct access to a management reserve so he will raise the change request get the change request approved then management reserve will be a part of your cost baseline and then project manager will be able to use that So let's summarize a uh, reserve analysis with both contingency and management reserve. So contingency reserve is a budget within a cost baseline that is allocated for identified and accepted risk known unknowns. And management reserve is reserve for unforeseen risk unknown unknown related to the work that is within the scope of a project. cost of quality cost of quality should be included in estimate assumptions about the cost of quality is used to prepare activity cost estimates project management information system basically they are group of software tools that helps project manager they assist simplify and facilitate estimation and help in rapid alternative estimation they can help you to plan organize and manage the resource cost also help you to develop the resource estimates the well known project management information system tools are microsoft project along with sharepoint primavera hp project portfolio management system these tools can automatically aggregate cost estimate can help project man manager to manage and track the cash flow and of course it can help you to generate various reports decision making estimation exercise is a good tool to get buy in from resources this is a team based estimation approach and helps to get commitment on emerging estimate it is used to improve estimation accuracy it may use a brainstorming and delphi or nominal group technique to arrive at estimation related decisions the outputs of estimate cost process are cost estimate basis of estimates and project document updates the key output is cost estimate cost estimate is a probable cost required to complete project work it can be presented in a summary form or in detail it includes all sort of a cost direct cost including labor material equipment services facilities indirect cost variable cost for example inflation allowance and exchange rate fixed cost for example one time setup cost and you may document special categories like cost of financing including interest charges cost also include contingency reserve for identified risk and management reserve for unplanned or unknown unknown uh, risk so everything put together you are going to get a cost estimates basis of estimates 
It contains the supporting documentation that provide a clear and complete understanding of how the cost estimates were derived. Supporting detail for activity cost estimate may include the basis of estimate, all assumption made, and any known constraint. Estimation may be indication of range of possible estimate, for example, AD 1000 plus minus 10%, or it can be confidence yeah, accuracy level base. As per PMI, we have two, uh, two possibilities, rough order of magnitude, which is minus 25 to plus 75%, which is done during the project initiation, and definite estimate, which is minus 5 to 10%, which is done after baseline year during baseline. Let's differentiate between rough order of magnitude and definitive estimate. So rough order of magnitude, you have low confidence. They are early estimate. Mostly you use analogous estimation technique and project might be new yeah, unknown project. So rough order of magnitude, the estimation range is minus 25% to plus 75%. Definitive estimates, you have high confidence in the estimate. Now this is done when scope and requirements are clear and clearly documented. It is generally done through a bottom-up estimation process. You get, uh, uh, you might be applying this when you have a repetitive project. Yes, yeah, similar project was done in the past. The range is minus 5% to plus 10%. It is also important how you communicate this estimations so that you can set a clear expectation with various stakeholders. So some of the things that you need to be careful about is do not communicate single number estimate. Always communicate range of estimate mentioning type and degree of confidence that you have. As the output of estimate cost, certain project documents will get updated. You have updates to assumption log, risk register. So any new risk found, yeah, any change to the existing risk that need to be updated within a risk register. And of course, lesson learned as a part of estimation activity. Let's do a quick recap of what we had learned so far in this session. This session was all about estimating cost. So the key focus of this process was tools and techniques used for estimation. We started with overview and process definition, discuss input tools and techniques and output. We talked about estimation techniques like analogous, parametric, three-point and bottom-up estimation. We gone through contingency and management reserves and the key output like cost estimate and basis of estimation. Great job. See you in the next session, Determine Budget.